this bar is boring. Yeah, we should totally leave. Okay, so now I should have two center holes. And then I'll uh, keep working my way up to inch and a half. Actually, you know what? I don't know if I have an inch and a half drill bit. Oh, I don't know what I have to drill inch and a half hole. Whoop, uh oh. Sometimes when you're in the middle of a project, you gotta stop and make yourself some tooling. And this is one of those examples. I'm trying to build these press dies, and it turns out that I don't have a way to make an inch and a half hole. So I'm gonna build myself a little boring bar. We'll make ourselves an inch and a half hole. And then we'll get back to the other project. So I guess you could say this video is kind of a detour along the way. Real simple boring bar build. So I hope you enjoy this. I don't have that one inch and above uh, adjustable drill bit, whatever they call it, the universal drill bit. It's actually just a boring bar with the Morris Taper 3 on it that I used in the closing drill press that Grandpa had. That was actually Grandpa's boring bar. I just always felt like it was too expensive to buy my own. It was always planning on making my own, but I never did. Um, something I was going to make as soon as I got up here, but the boring bar I do have fits through the almighty Rockford lathe. You know, that bore in there is plenty big to slide a one-inch shaft through, so, you know, being long is fine in there. And, you know, I could put this plate in the Rockford lathe and bore them out in there. But I thought, well, maybe I'll see if one of these end mills is an inch and a half end mill. And uh, three of them, I think is what I counted, are inch and a half end mills, but they must have been resharpened because they're 40 to 60 thousandths under inch and a half. So that ain't going to cut it very well for me. So what I'm thinking about doing, since this is a inch and a quarter end mill holder, and I want to drill an inch and a half hole, I'm seriously thinking about just taking a short chunk of inch and a quarter shaft you know, use it. But I don't even know if I have an inch and a quarter drill bit either. Anything above an inch, I'm very, very limited on. So I gotta do some thinking. This is all I have left for inch and a quarter shaft. And I guess more of this because I use this stuff all the time. This is a very common size on farm equipment. That's why I'm always out. Uh, but anyway, this inch and a quarter shaft fits very well in the inch and a quarter end mill holder I have. Not a lot sticking out, but I think if I come back just a half inch from the end here, so the cutter will be from there to my thumb, that gives me, that gives me about an inch and three eighths clearance above it. That would work for the majority of stuff I do. So, I'm going to actually turn this down to a one inch shaft. I have several good ways of making one inch holes and I have a couple good one inch reamers. I even have a ten thousandths over one inch reamer. So making one inch holes is something I'm well equipped to do. And that's the size I like to start with. I think what I'm going to do first is square the ends on this shaft because that is horrible. make these two spots. All I'm going to do is stick this up in here now that both ends are square. Make sure it bottoms out. And then I'm going to tighten them up. Yeah, I can see the two marks. Okay, barely there, but I see them. A combination of this end mill and those two marks will be good. And there we go. All right. So, 
That's how I'm gonna make the flats. We'll do the other flat here, off camera. And it is a perfect fit in there. I am very happy with that. I found the end of the shaft and came over half an inch. There's a half an inch from this end of the cutter to the end of the shaft, so that give me a half inch below my bit. I'm gonna make a flat spot there, eighth of an inch deep. Make it down eighth of an inch, that way it's on the one inch flat. La 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 la. So next I'll drill a 3 8 hole through that flat. Okay, now that I have that hole through there, I'll turn this thing 90 degrees and drill and tap the hole for the grub screw. And this is where paying attention to your order operations and thinking the entire project through pays off because I can't guarantee you that these flats and this hole are all, you know, aligned with each other. That these three flats are all in the same plane. I know these two flats are in the same plane because I did them at the same time. But I, I moved the piece and then made this flat because I didn't think this through. So, it would have been very nice if, you know, I'd done all three of these at once. So, I could rotate this thing and index off of these to know that I changed this one 90 degrees to get this grub hole right. <sighs> Lack of planning. Okay, now we can set this thing up and machine it down to one inch. We will see if this works. I've never tried this. I've uh, seen it done on YouTube, but you know, everything on YouTube's fake anyway, right? All right, let's see here. I think I'll just go in, find zero. I don't know if I'm on the center line. Uh, maybe about like that. So you lock the table and why? There's, I can hear it touching it, so I'm gonna set X to zero. And I'm gonna dial in 50 thousandths just because I better not go 50. Let's just go 30. Go ahead and lock the table. And I'm just gonna feed down by hand and see if this even cuts. Or if it all blows up. Oh, my grind is right for this. This is messing with my head. Well, probably ought to put that back there a little better. Feels really good. Sounds a little weird. cut look like. It's decent. That's not a good cut. I don't have that grind quite right. Uh, I got a big burr on the end of that thing too, don't I? That's, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and make a pass though before I adjust the grind, but that is what I want. Oh, I got to measure that before I, because uh, I want to make sure I'm not going past an inch here. Shouldn't be there yet. It should be 180. 186 is what that's measuring. 187, so, okay. Okay, try power feed at, uh, oh, let's push it at 18 thousandths. See how that goes. Nope, reverse. 
Get a little closer than that, probably. Oh, shoot. Dang it. I can't power feed in reverse. I think I'm on the center line. Here we go. Forward. Ah, the other way. Okay. Set that as zero. Try this. Dark over here. I feel like that side's cutting a little better. feels pretty good. All right. Well, I think I figured it out. I don't know. I might play a little bit more here, but you get the idea what I'm doing. I still got 150 thousandths to take off of there, so... Did a very good job. Okay, I am five thousandths over. So I'm gonna see if I can flip this bit. So I'm thinking that through and I don't think that's right. So I'm gonna have to grind another bit, make me a shear bit, and do a couple shear passes and see if we can get even better finish on that. Can you even see those little stringy things coming off there in the camera? Little tiny hairs. Not out of focus, you can't see it either. I think that's working right. I want to move it away from the tool before I go back up. There. Oh, didn't want to go up that far. There we go. Yeah, those are that's showing a thousandths under. One and a half thousandths under, actually. So I might be right there. Boy, that's a beautiful finish. Beautiful. I love that. Remember that flat I put in there before I drilled that just over 3 8 hole? Yeah, it's not focusing. You can see the corners of that flat right there. Man, DRO is just freaking awesome. Now I'm going to do it high tech and file out that hole and make it square. But i got to figure out how to clamp it first because I don't have a vise. I just clamped it in the mill. I think that'll be alright. I'll just get myself comfortable. Oh, i got to find a handle for that little thing. After doing a lot of looking, I decided to just use this pair of uh, locking pliers to hold my file. Um, it actually goes back into the recess of the pliers there. So I think it'll work pretty good. It feels solid. May not be a bad little handle. I don't know. We'll see. Definitely comfortable. I was going quick. These files are aggressive. Heck, man. Whew, that corner's almost done. I'm only 30 seconds into filming here. Fits pretty nice. I didn't get it quite perfect but darn close it's 
Not a lot of play in it there. Really not. Took me about eight minutes to file that. And I guarantee you four minutes of that was seeing if I was getting that close to fit. You know, the first two minutes was just lickety split. I had the corners out and then it was just touch and touch and touch. You know, after that just making sure I was not going too far. But And this is what the grind looks like for the bit. So we'll actually run this way, run in the metal like that. A little bit of clearance on the back side there, here, and tapered back just a little bit on the front. And then it's also ground with a little bit of radius that way. That way when it's you know making a hole, this back corner of the bit isn't hidden. I'm gonna make another one of these someday in the future. I'm actually gonna make it just one inch. I went ahead and ordered me a one inch end mill holder for this thing. I'm gonna make a straight shaft and it's actually going to have threads on the end so I can thread in this extension to it. Uh, so this bit will have to be up just a little bit further. That way it'll be in the solid part of the shaft. That way I can make extensions for it and whatnot. So there'll be another video uh, in the future about making line boring stuff. guess there 25 thousandths over so <sighs> all right we'll try there see what that gets us <sighs> I don't know if I get to show up on camera or not but this front edge here Got a flat spot there, right at the end of my pinky nail. You see it? That's what's going on. You go get rid of that. Man, this bar is dull. What? I just sharpened it. Oh, you mean there's nothing going on here? That kind of dull. That's how you make a hole. Listen to that. My little handle on my down feet isn't even vibrating. Nice chips. Little small chips in there I'm not liking, but most of that's good size curly Q stuff. Heck yeah, that my friends is how you drill a hole. Oh, I'm tickled pink with this. Sweet. It. A little short. Well, anyway, if I get them centered in there. Anyway, got plenty of room in the ends to weld them in. That is going to be awesome. I hate that if you're cold, they're cold campaign. It's 36 degrees a day, and this dog is over in the snowdrift chewing on his bone because he's too hot. Aren't you, doggy? You doing, Dakota? You enjoying that bone? My neighbors are nice and gave him a deer bone. He's loving it.